They blend in perfectly. I've seen I've seen a few of them before. This is a chocolate lead colored one, right? Yeah. The biggest thing with them is coming like this. Very non-aggressive except at feeding time. Very slow moving. My buddy Coyote Peterson took a bite from one of these guys. Oh man. Yeah, so we're with, we're with we're with Ryan Iz right now. I see right here a bunch of different So. Welcome to my world. Some people call me Raj, and some people call me the Iguana Man. We go on all different jobs here in South Florida, battling invasive species and other nuisance wildlife, helping local businesses, residents, and homeowner associations. Serving our clients is our passion and is what we live for. Like. Comment and hit the red subscribe yeah, button if you're new. Many, uh, Thanks for joining us and hope to see you out here in the field with us soon. Yes, sir. Another one in the back. This is what you come to Florida for right there. All right, we just got through the door. These guys are wearing leaves. They, Mark. they do. Look at that. Yeah, those are giant geckos. Giant geckos? Wow, look at all of them, man. Yeah, you're right. They do look like leaves. Or like tree bark or something. Yeah. Definitely good camouflage on them. Check out these little dinosaurs. Look at that one, man. I believe they're from Asia, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think they're in the crested gecko family. I'm not sure. Or... Yeah, these are all from New Caledonia. It's a big island mass off of Australia. Um, but yeah, you got Cresteds, these are the gargoyles, you got mossy geckos, and we have the giant geckos down here. Like a uh, beginner reptile or expert reptile keeper, where, where would these guys fall into? All these are for beginners, very easy to care for. They don't require any special heating, they don't need any special lighting. What is their diet? Um, these guys feed, they will eat crickets if you offer that, They're, they enjoy the crickets, but what makes them so easy is that you have a fruit powdered formula that you just keep in the fridge and you mix it with some water. Okay. That's it. Give them a little drink. Do they have to be in a certain temperature? They do well in room temps, so anywhere from the 60s to 70s, they do great. It's like they would uh, blend in and mimic the trees. <laughs> and then see how that works. <laughs> Keep it a little further out. Yeah, there you go. They can jump pretty far. That's perfect, right there. Look at that. They got some rhino iguanas. Yeah. And Cuban iguanas. Check out the pattern on the back here. Yeah, Look at those. Nice. It's a rhino iguana right there, but kind of looks like a zebra, huh? Yeah. Look at that pattern on it. Looks like a rhino iguana with some zebra patterns on it. Can't make this stuff up. Maybe that might be a uh, like dominant male colorations, you know, coming in early. Yeah, you're right. Because the other ones in the back don't have that one. They don't have that. Those might be females in the back. All right, so we're at another table. Check this out. No reptiles here. We're a couple of them, but we do have some invertebrates. Looks like some arachnids, you get a some cephalopods, yeah. some sort. Oh, that thing's big, man. That is big. Is that a is that a giant yeah, desert centipede? Right there? Is that, 
Oh. That thing's really big. It might be a giant desert centipede. Let's see. All the way from uh, Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy Coyote Peterson took a bite from one of these guys a couple years ago. Well, one from the same family. This one, yeah, this one's actually way worse. Way worse bite? Way worse. Yeah, he handled, I think, the one of the Texas centipedes, the Arizona species. Uh, these Asian species are probably double. Really? Yeah. Kind of advanced. Uh, you gotta be advanced uh, handler, kind of. You know, uh, having these guys. A little bit, yeah. People don't typically handle them, though, right? Not the Asian species. Usually, if anyone handles them, it's usually the South American species. They have a milder venom, and they're generally more um, hot. Okay. Okay. And we have dart frogs over here. We've got different dart. species. The dart frogs. Uh, are these guys holding poison or venom? Uh, not anymore. So in the wild, they do have that really strong uh, venom, but. Um, Captivity, they lose it only because in the wild they eat ants and termites to give them that poison. So once they're here in captivity, you only feed them fruit flies and they lose all that poison altogether. Okay, okay. So it's just all de uh, diet dependent. Yeah. These guys are eating probably crickets and little mealworms and stuff like that. So. Uh, they can eat tiny, tiny pinhead crickets, but for the most part, you want to feed them fruit flies, maybe tiny much worms in there. Really okay. Tiny stuff. Diet of just fruit flies and a couple little crickets. And they're super chill. Yeah, they're, they, they don't have any strong venom. UV fluorescence, man. That's awesome. I heard with scorpions, uh, the bigger the pinchers, less venom they have, right? Generally, yeah, yeah. It, if they're really bulky, normally the venom's pretty weak. When I had emperor oh, scorpions, they would never use the stinger. It was always the the, the claws. Yeah. yeah, almost always. What? My golly, if we don't got uh, some nice chameleons out here. Blue one. Yeah. I think that might be a panther. Chameleon. That's what he looks like fired up. He is kind of fired up right now. They're saying the difference between a boa and a python is they're, they're just uh, different traits, different characteristics. Different species. Completely different species. What's the chance of one of these hatching in the, like wild from like a, you know, like if they were like well, in their native regions? The original albino came from the wild. Came from the wild? So it happens in the wild all the time. Um, just like albinism with people happens. It's just a very rare occurrence. But in the wild, if, it, if you had an albino baby, it would, it would stick out like a sore thumb across. All that green and brown. Oh, he's opening his mouth. Man. It wouldn't survive. You can get 10 feet, 40 pounds. Depending on the enclosure and diet and stuff like that. How much you feed him? How much you feed him? Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a 13 foot Hermes python for about 10 years. Lattice, flowers, like hibiscus flowers, any kind of like collar. These are like pythons, man. Albino pot, oh, yeah, some type of. Yeah, they eat cactus. They love star Yeah, really, any any kind of fruit just goes citrus, like lemon. So a little bit about these pythons. Are these albino, or is this just how they are? What was it? Are these pythons albino, or yeah, is this, or, I'm sorry, these. Bolas, but then albinism is a a a mutation that they have. But they also have hypo. They have jungle motley. And then these are like pastels. It's a polygenic trait, so a lot of different genes are involved. So these guys, that look. so these guys really wouldn't like exist naturally in the wild. In the be. wild, they would not look anything like this. They wouldn't be. They would, so these are all basically. They wouldn't, they wouldn't live a day. They basically all they got different genes to make them it, yes. uh, somewhat rare. Yes. So you see some snapping turtles. Look at these little guys, he's getting his little breakfast on. I believe these are some type of uh, South American land tortoise. They got red foots, they got cherry heads. And then they even got this guy right here, a Chinese big head turtle. It's about a $2,000 turtle right there. So how rare is this turtle? Pretty 
rare? On a scale of one through ten. Ryan, how, and at one to ten, how rare is this turtle? Twelve. <laughs> These guys are. Yeah, right. It's like uh, definitely good camouflage, like safari looking, like they'd blend in perfectly. It's called an Indian star tortoise, all the way from India. You got. Wow, look at this. Um, corn snakes, I'm guessing, maybe? Hognose. These are the snakes that play dead, if I'm not mistaken. Look at their hognose. They are, I think they are hognose. Yeah, look. See how nice and defined. He's got like a little snout on yeah. his nose. They dig. These are all just different morphs of uh, ball pythons. Yes, they are. These are some crazy patterns. Are these all from like different regions of the earth? No. These patterns, are they? Um, I think ball pythons are mostly found in Central Africa. And some of these morphs come from the wild, some of them don't. Some, okay. Some of them uh, pop up in captivity. You want to hold one leg? You got one out. No, you did yesterday. Are they going to stay like that? It depends on the genes. Um, some of them will fade out a little bit. Take, for example, um, this banana clown to this banana clown, which is a year difference. This one, you said? Yeah. This one's same same genetic makeup as that. Oh, and it's losing some of its color. Or yeah. pattern, the pattern. Uh, losing some pattern, some yeah. Of them, some of them do, some of them don't. Oh, this one looks very fair. A lot of these snakes are, most of them are captive bred, right? Yeah, all these are captive bred. I bred all these. So these are all captive, and they're all just from different lineage of different uh, genetics. Right. To make them like, basically a one in a million snake to find in the wild. Right. Yeah, you're not going to find a lot of these in the wild. Not nah, right. I mean, a lot of the base, base morphs came from the wild. So do you think this would be like a good first pet for, Absolutely. for a child? Absolutely. Yeah. And what would make what would make them a good pet? Like what's, um, like very, diets? Very, like what do they eat? They're very docile. Yeah. They're very non-aggressive except at feeding time. Very slow moving. Uh, they're not real squirrely like a corn snake or king snake. Okay. So Super docile. Oh, these are some patterns obviously we've never seen before, and it's like basically over a one in a million chance to ever encounter like one of these. Uh, in the wild, right? Genetic. Yep. In the wild. So that's why some of the price tags will reflect on that. What's the full length that these snakes could get to? Uh, they top out a very big one, six foot. Okay. Yeah. Very, okay. Generally four to five foot. King snake. Oh, it's a king snake. So males get Where where are these guys native from? Um, all over. All over? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm from Argentina. I've seen I've seen a few before. This Arizona. is a chocolate league colored one, yeah, right? He's, um, yeah, marble. You say marble. So he, he's yours. He's not for sale, right? No, 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 not for sale. sale. For the right price, I don't know, boy. It's super calm, super just chill. Yeah. Once you yeah, handle yeah. these guys and they know that you're not a threat, right? They really warm up, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love and I love this one here. Like I was scared of him at first because he like a little a little El loco. Uh -huh. but when, when, once they get to know you, like, you really, like, real cool. Um, I have a banana I wanted to bring, but he ain't share it right now. 
If you have a banana king snake and a no, chocolate banana, king snake, no, uh, what if you mix them? Will you get a chocolate banana king snake? Might be. <laughs> a little bit of yellow. Look, there it is right there. The yellow and the and the, and the brown. Open your hands up. Oh my goodness. You want to hold her? Can I? You might get peed on, just FYI. All right, I'll take uh, it. Are, so, you, are you sure? Yeah. Captain, we, yeah. we got plans with it. I'm kidding. Yeah, well, I'll meet you over here. Biggest thing underneath the belly like this, and then I just put my feet, my hand down here yeah. to support her feet. Like a puppy. Yep. Oh no. And then, oh, no. so the biggest thing with them is coming like this, okay. and okay. like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. I thought porky pants like the pork feet. Look at oh, it. Oh, they do. <laughs> uh, African crested. Look at that. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, Eric, 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 uh, it's starting to... Oh, yeah. It's, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, she just had milk. Okay. She's a month and a half old. There you go. Okay, oh, she's, oh, she's a baby. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so when they're, when they're born, they only have about half their quills, and they're super soft. It's not until they actually get born, and then the air itself makes the quills turn hard. And when they're first born, the quills are smaller like this, the smaller diameter ones... Um, and then now wow. she's starting to get her adult quills in. Her tail has hollow ones, so for deterrence, they rattle them together to help deter them away, animals away, and predators away. Their back foot, her, her back foot, their back feet are bigger. And another thing they do is they thump them on the ground to help deter them, the predators away, because- Like a rabbit. Like wow. a rabbit, they are rodent. Um, they are in the rodent family, so, um, in the wild, they'll over in Africa, they will go about nine miles every night. They're nocturnal, so they'll travel about nine miles every night to look for food. They're really good diggers, uh, and they're digging for roots. And so instead of like the North American ones where they're completely covered in quills, they only grow the quills back right there. Another thing they do is when they feel threatened, they'll fan their quills out, and they actually charge sideways. They will charge at them sideways. Three, about three foot is the size they get. Awesome little mohawk. Those whiskers, man, they are so long. Wow, he probably uses that to sense uh, for a prey around him. Do they eat in the wild? What would these guys eat? Like ants and bugs and stuff? No, roots. So they'll dig down and look for roots. Strictly roots? Strictly a vegetarian? Strictly, yes. So, oh, wow. Uh, oh, my gosh. So in the, we give it like rodent diet. Um, Carrots, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yucca roots, stuff like that. Um, and even then, in their cage, they'll dig down and find roots in the ground and eat on them. Oh, he's a baby. Oh, he's ready to go. Oh, he's ready to go. All right, yeah. yeah. See him popping up his quills. Here, we'll trap house flies, fruit flies, uh, bees, um, and all their insects. Usually okay. bees are more attracted when they flower and they don't. And then you were saying that there was like different breeds up here. Oh, yeah. what, which one would be the most easiest to maintain as like, um, you know, so plant? From all of them, I would go with this one over here. Yes, so you can cut them right over here. I wouldn't go too far, so but yeah, care of the animals and uh, hurting the rice where the and then we could take a we could
Silly iguana. Silly, silly, silly. You see their food back there. They love hibiscus. Yes. Look at this guy. Chase like Arch. These iguanas, man. They love to bask. You know, you're just sitting there arched up. Wow. Right over here. Uh, it has one, two, three baby plants growing up and then the main plant. Oh, that's perfect. There you right, go. Man, thank you. You're welcome. You both have a great day. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, man. These guys are, they have this like bright blue color. And they can't jump, but they're just from, they're from the island of St. Martin in the Caribbean. And they start off blue and then they turn uh, purple, pink, and green. Question, what what type of handler, or what type of person do you think are like kind of into these uh, creepy crawly creatures? I mean, um, you're talk, you're, you, like, you seem like more like you have a scientific background with these creatures. So I just take a scientific approach to keeping. A lot of people just keep it um, based on an opinion and we try to focus on like nature and replicating that in our keeping. So it's a different way of keeping and you actually are able to focus more on what's best for the animal instead of putting our own impression of what we think is best. Um, so like these guys, they'll live in trees. So one of the things that we focus on for arboreal species is ventilation. And there's a lot of stipulation as to what is the correct way. Some people prefer doing cross ventilation is where you put ventilation on each side, but you can also do top ventilation um, the most important thing is just air exchange for these guys. So um, gotcha, gotcha, that gotcha. that is like to provide fresh air, but also to make sure that any pathogens in the air, like mold or fungus spores that are already in our air, aren't settling down and actually growing. So the, rate the difficulty of keeping this for a beginner on a scale of one through ten. Um. So it for these for this size, these guys are actually pretty good for beginners. So I'll say about a three. Um, so these are probably the easiest, so, um, one of the easiest ranches to keep. If they were tiny babies, I would probably say like a six or a seven because the babies have less water in them. They're easier to dehydrate. And if you're not experienced with keeping tarantulas and you don't know what to look for, they can, some people do struggle with the tiny babies, but the juveniles are way easier to keep and they're way hardier because they do have more water in them. Question, are these uh, tarantulas or, or spiders, are they in the same like lineage or same like uh, family as crabs? Or is there some type of... So they are arachnids, just like crabs, but they're in Theraphosidae, which are just uh, the arachnid, the like spider type arachnids. Yeah. And then they're in, the, they're in Megalomorph, Megalomorphae. So that is basically like prehistoric spiders. So they're not true spiders. Um, true spiders have fangs that bite sideways. So the chilceray or their fangs will actually bite sideways. And then uh, tarantulas bite more at an angle. And then true spiders also have more complex webbing so they can change the type of web that they create. Um, so some species have up to six different types of web, uh, which would be like orb weavers. You have structural strands of web and then you have the sticky strands of web that catch their food. So um, orb weavers are probably some of the most complex webbers because they have the structural strands, the sticky strands, and then they actually have a strand that they use for webbing up their food. So they have mm. many different types, but tarantulas are all just sheet webbers. And what I mean by sheet webbers is all along the spinnerets, so actually create little tiny strands and they go back and forth, back and forth until they create structures. And that's what they actually live on in the wild. Wow. What's your name again? I'm Will. Hey, thanks to Will, Zodig Unlimited. These guys know their stuff. You guys want to learn more? see uh, some of the animals they have showcased. Yeah, these guys are awesome. Go ahead, check them out on their website. Thank you so much for that yeah, demonstration. Yeah, man, for sure. Mm -hmm. And thanks for coming by, we appreciate it. And you see he settled down as soon as he touches his web because they know where their web is. They actually have pheromones in their web that they know that is their space. And that's how they stay in their space and they stay out of other spiders' space. Wow. Yeah, nice close up. That is really, really cool. Yeah. Hey.
game and we're learning so much stuff out here. Like I said, guys, if you never came to any of these events, don't even think twice. Yeah, they're super get cool. Get the wife, get the kids. You guys come out here, see some of these critters, learn a thing or two about nature. I had to do research papers on those things, like crazy. Because my uh, evolutionary ecologist professor was a botanist. Beauty and all. Sick. Giant blue beauty. Look, I'm going to put it under this light over here. Wow. Yeah, so this is a subspecies of the Cuban night anole. And the Cuban night anole is very common here in Florida, but these guys are very rare. And obviously their color speaks for themselves. And right now it's not even fired up. When it's fired up, all the green you see gets really bright blue and the, the yellow just pops. Wow. Yeah. Are these guys found in Cuba too or are they? Yeah, in yeah they're Cuban. They're in a little um, insular island off of Cuba. And that's the only place in the, the world where they're found. That's cool, man. Guys, we're, we're hanging out with the dudes here. At so this is called a red-eyed crocodile skink. It's a very, very popular pet lizard that everybody loves. Now these guys though, they're not animals that I would recommend for like a lot of handling, but they are very beautiful. And if you set them up in a really nice vivarium, they definitely, uh, you know they pop and they they make they make it come to life but more of a secretive shy creature and you could tell like their scales just looks like something from a fairy tale book very cool, uh, it's cool. yeah For a second there, i didn't think he was real yeah but it's it's awesome so you're not gonna believe it guys we pulled up to the reptile show we just met one of my good friends right here it's ryan been while, is vicious man. it's been years bro it's been a while you, man what a surprise how's man. iguana fan all the iguana fam. We got our work cut out. You know, we're out there as much, you know, pretty often. Around, bro. Hey, maybe one of these days you can come out here and help me catch some of these guys, That's or fine. maybe some snakeheads, bro. Oh, I love my snakeheads. Spot. It's a pond, and there were a lot of bass out there at one point, but some of the people that work there, they're telling me that they're seeing less bass and more snakeheads. Big snakes. Big, big snakes, I love bro. big snakeheads, bro. Bunch of different ones. I don't know how many are there, but we need some help. We need some professional help, bro. So Thanks too, bro. Let's do it. We need some professional help, so maybe one day, right. you know, we go out there. Maybe a little catch and cook. If we if we get them, we get them. If, if, I'm gonna say it. We'll cut them open. We'll see. Are they really eating the bass or not? Because they they're so aggressive. But they eat something, they'll suck up the rock, suck up like really? shells and stuff with it. Yeah, but I mean, they definitely eat bass. I think I think they're not as bad as people say that they are, but. They're definitely eating some of our native fish. They're cool. Oh, They're cool. What's up? They're cool, man. Yeah, so we're, with, we're, with, we're with Ryan IZ right now, and uh, we're at this, legend, this animal event, and uh, he might be getting his first animal today. Maybe. First yeah, animal today. Right. Man, look at this, guys. We're at King Reptiles. You guys see it right there. Uh, pythons, ball pythons. These guys don't get big, they get really small. And then look at these little buggers. Wow. What's that? You can see it right here, a bunch of different patterns. Look at this one. Yeah. Compared to that one.
Yeah, that's a little bit going to say that's a different thing. pieces that you've made yourself, right? Yeah, so it's all original artwork that I sell prints and stickers of, and I do apparel online as well. Um, and we do coloring books, tumblers, all kinds of fun stuff. What's your inspiration when you are uh, making these creations? Hands down the animals. There's so much variety out there, and that's why I'm so drawn to reptiles. You've got every type of color, pattern, you know, you've got different texture scales, different shapes and sizes, there's something for everybody. So I really enjoy doing that with my artwork and, and trying to diversify the yeah, amount of species I have. Put these little accents in your home really brings a sense of uh, you know good well-being in there, you know. Yeah, trying to trying to bring more awareness to some really cool animals that a lot of people don't know about. Primarily because I got into the reptile industry, so I actually started out as a, an aquatics specialist. So I worked at a fish store for eight years, did aquarium maintenance, uh, got super into reptiles, had a lot of fun with that. And when I decided to start doing artwork um, and getting back into it, it's mostly reptiles that it kind of snowballed because. You know, you come to a show, you've got like five pieces of art, and people are like, hey, well, do you have like a carpet python? I've got one at home. And I'm like, no, not yet. So every show, I try to bring something new that people would ask. The more you got involved, the more motivated you got. Exactly, and the more right. animals people are looking for, too. So yeah, my website's adlinedrawbetsandart.com, um, and I'll, I'll give you a, a card as well. So I've got my web store on there, my social media information on there. I do time-lapse videos of all my art, so you can see it from start to finish. And really? uh, we'll be posting up some tutorials soon. Oh man, I gotta definitely check that out. Right yeah. I wanna, I wanna see like how some of yeah, you can see it all from from scratch. Basically. Maybe even learn to draw myself because I can't. Sitting down, practicing, and a lot of people get discouraged when they're not not feeling like they're doing well. But that's actually a really great way to learn. Anytime you get frustrated, you take that and you apply it to your next piece. On the card, I believe that's like some type of Asian uh, crocodilian of some sort. Yeah, Indian guard. And then. You guys want to go ahead, you know, see some of these pieces yourself more in depth and also see how some of these beautiful arts are created. There you have it right there. I say that? I don't know. In Pempe? Yeah. How's it Pempe? Pempe? Never even heard. Alright, I'm going to get going here. It's a Pelieras ponytail. That's what they look like every day. And those flowers drop every day, and there's a blue bash next to them. Oh, these are statues. Is that real? Did you ever have one of these as a pet, Eric? Imagine if that thing gets away and crawls on you at night while you're asleep. <laughs> Green lizard looks like a toy, dude. Holy smokes. I think we found the mother low of species. Look at that. Pythons, boas, milk snakes. Bunch of different variations. <laughs> so what's what's this green one right here? Uh, Emerald tree bow. Okay, I I notice it's got cat eyes. Typically, they say like animals with cat eyes could be uh, like venomous, maybe. Yeah, no, they're not venomous. Okay. 
eyes? Yeah. In this case, so this, <laughs> yeah. it's not all true on all. Yeah. We've got a variation of different skinks, geckos over here. Man, we're seeing a lot of different species. A lot of different species, yep. The second, I know what this is. We've caught some of these before, dude. Same variation right there. My, some of my babies right here. So that's the mom and her baby. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm awesome. teaching my son, you know, how to handle the bird business when I'm long gone. Now he's a big guy now. Said you're looking for a new pet, right? Yeah. I think we found him for you. I don't know. We don't have them here. Like, what? What are your thoughts? Still thinking about it. <laughs> these are um. Adult, adult discoid. Yeah, it's a colony. Are these uh? These are discoid roaches. So, so um, I just wanna, I just wanna make, try to make this, uh, make this clear. So, uh, these are pets. No, they're all food. Our feed in here is all food. Oh, he was, he, he, he was thinking no, that they're pets. It's like taking, putting a leash on this guy and trying to <laughs> take him out for a walk. No, no, no. These are all for food. Our feeders, they reproduce pretty quickly. Yeah. 
Um, and they have a high nutrition profile. So, what type of animal would eat uh, this? Um, like mo most monitors, monitors would, would eat them. Anything like on the bigger scale would probably eat them. Anything that has probably its eyes as wide as that. Yeah. What like a, a snake. What, a, what about an iguana? Depends if it's a vegetarian or not. Like green iguanas don't eat meat. <laughs> True. Okay. Let me know if anything. All right. Thank you guys so much. We, right. uh, yeah, we thought my, you know, my friend thought he was gonna be going home with a with a new pet, you know. So. I mean, we do. We do. Yeah. yeah, you guys are the feeder plug for real. Oh my gosh, you got a whole, you got a whole pack right there. Yeah. We got a birds. Yeah. Baby birds. We got a whole pack right there, dude. Yeah. Man, get a little fried. This tastes fried like out. chicken. <laughs> there, there it is, right there. You guys can contact them. They do. They could ship uh, nice nutritional stuff stuff right to your doorstep. <laughs> oh, hey, I bought a snake, bro. First time snake owner. Ryan is fishing here with my girl, my baby. Ryan is snaking. <laughs> and, and, and Ryan is snaking. Check her out. Beautiful lavender ball python. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Her nail right there. Loki cut my eye just now. Is there a scratch there? Oh, uh, no. Nah. No? Oh, a little bit of mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She, little, she was she... sliding on my face. Yeah, I didn't know that. Wait, what is that? Is that a... For that's mating. Like For mating, yeah. That's nuts, bro. Dude, does that mean, like, did these things have, like, feet at one point? Like, I don't see that's actually a cool little theory yeah, right there. Yeah, that is, that yes, is cool. Yeah. I think she likes you a lot, man. She's got you in a very particular hole, bro. I, I, I think I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in a rear naked choke right now. If I go to sleep and I, and I get caught slipping, I'm done. Is it on there tight, Ryan? It's on there tight, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, it's like real tight. Look at the heating pad for this. Like a heating tree snake. trunk right here, man. It's great. Geo had a great point. Cause I was looking at to buy my first snake, and I was gonna get like a small one, like a couple <laughs> what, months old. Yeah, just a couple, like a hatchling. So. But you know, it's good to like first time snake, I guess, to like get something that's eating. This is the snake's. Born in 2019. LP, LP. Actually, when I started YouTube, have some comments in the comments for their name. I don't know what I'm gonna name this snake. Absolutely. If you guys want to update, want to learn more about the snake, and help Ryan name it and take care of it, drop in the comments, guys. Yep. Also, check him out on YouTube as well. Appreciate it, man. Subscribe, subscribe. I film fishing videos. The reptile community is so positive. Everybody that I, I met is so nice. There's a lot of people that may know a lot more than you, but it's okay to ask questions. And everyone here is super friendly. Baby, I, I knew this was gonna happen, and it's okay. Check out Ryan. He films some epic fishing videos. He travels all around the world. Thank you. And he's one of the best local fishermen out here. He's got a lot of respect with the locals, you. and he's actually, like I said, he has a couple trips coming up. So you guys go ahead, check it out. I appreciate you guys. His videos man. are like river monster quality. Damn, that's how. That's it. that's the jump that you know. Well, it's crazy, man. Like you're out here catching whole dinosaurs in the most urban, crazy places, man. So we're both out here doing crazy stuff. You're a big fish layer yourself, homie. So all love and respect, all love, man. Bro, all love. We'll see, we have to see you in the field. Hey, we'll link up soon. 2024. We'll make some. We'll make some movies. All right.